In the last video, we saw what is rate limiting and also what is the load shedding. In this video, we are going to implement rate limiting using the Spring Cloud Gateway within Spring Boot application. Just to brief what we just discussed in the previous video, we have an application or we have multiple instances of the application. We have requests coming in and we restrict the rate limiters to an API specific limit. For example, we saw that get products had a hundred RPS. So I'm going to use a simple drop wizard application. I have created an endpoint called hello just for our example. And I'm going to create a new API gateway using the spring cloud gateway service or the library. So within Spring Boot, you can create a Spring Cloud Gateway library and convert that Spring Boot application into an API gateway. And we can easily add the rate limiters into that gateway. So out of the box, Spring Cloud Gateway provides rate limiters and you can use them. If let's say you want to bring your custom rate limiters, you can bring that as well. Also, the Spring Cloud Gateway has the mapping to the same hello endpoint and all the rate limiting data is all stored inside Redis. So by default, the Spring Cloud Gateway is going to use Redis to store all our information in the local Redis instance. And in order to do this, we just need to add a YAML configuration and very less code. So let's try building that. As usual, I'm going to the start.spring.io. I'm going to use the Maven version of the Java and I'm going to use 2.7.6. The group is com tech primers artifact uh, is going to be called as rate limiter example. So this is going to be a rate limiting example. So I'm just saying rate limiter example here. I'll just say rate limiter as the package. I'm going to use a jar packaging and I'm going to use Java 11. And in addition to that, we said we will be using the Spring Cloud Gateway. So I'm just mentioning Spring Cloud Gateway. So let's add that as a dependency. That's it. So we'll be generating this project and opening it in IntelliJ. Let me open that quickly. So the rate limiter project got loaded. I see some errors. Let me close these. So I can see that in the POM XML, I'm using Spring 2.7.6. There is a new dependency called uh, Spring Cloud Starter Gateway. That's it. So Spring Cloud Gateway is all added. I have the drop wizard application here. The drop wizard application, let me restart this. So I've been running it for a while. Just This just has a hello endpoint. If you see, this is the resource. I have a hello endpoint and then it's just returning hello world. That's it. It's going to be running in the port 8080. 8081 has the admin running. So these two ports are blocked. So I'm going to use the 8082 plot for running my Spring Cloud Gateway. So let me go to the resources. I'll be creating a application YAML because that's where we'll be adding our configurations. So this is going to be started in the port number 8082. So I'm going to say server port 8082. Also, I want to add some configurations. So I have already added some predefined configuration. So I'm going to add the application name as rate limiter demo and I'll be adding the spring cloud gateway route. So I want to add a route to the backend application, which is the 8080 hello, which is the drop wizard, right? And also I want to um, call slash hello so that that gets redirected. So what happens is if I call slash hello to my spring cloud gateway, that gets routed or redirected to the drop wizard application. So before adding the rate limiters, Let's start this application and see if it is working. The application is up. Let me go to the browser. So I'll be doing a 8082 and then if you see that it directly goes to hello. If you see 8080 also points to hello, that's the direct uh, access to the application. But if you come via the API gateway or the Spring Cloud gateway, it is 8082 and then slash hello. So our gateway is working fine. Now I have to add my configuration for enabling the rate limiter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the rate limiter configuration in addition to the, uh, the routing logic. So if you see here, what got added is I'm pointing my uh, Redis instance to the local host. If you don't provide the local host, it automatically points your Redis instance to the local host 6379, but I'm just adding it so that we know this application is going to connect to Redis. That's why I added it. Uh, right. I mean, I'm just going to add my application name as rate limiter hyphen example. Uh, my routes are the same. And if you see here, I've added one more filters. So Spring Cloud Gateway has a lot of filters. 
So we are going to see the rate limiting filter in this video. So we are just adding it. There are more feed, uh, filters like circuit breakers and stuff like that. If you want me to make a video on the circuit breakers with spring clock gateway, do let me know. I can I can try that. For, but for now, we are going to use the rate limiters. So the filter name is called request rate limiter. This is the default one which is provided by the spring cloud gateway. If you have any custom rate limiters, you can just plug them in um, as an argument. You can just add them uh, here. But I'm just using a default uh, one. Uh, there are some properties which I'm just uh, sitting here. Red is rate limiter dot replenish rate. Replenish rate is the rate at which I want to set um, the request per second for this particular API. Right. So I'm mentioning that for my uh, hello API, I want to say um, within a second, I can access this particular API only 20 times. Right. There's also something called burst capacity, which is 40. So what does this basically mean is if let's say the replenish rate got exceeded, right? I mean, you will be uh, obviously hitting 20 times and then the burst capacity is 40. What does that mean is for twice or for two consecutive seconds, if my replenish, replenish rate is exceeded, then I will stop uh, sending data to this particular request. So I will be like sending four two nines. So by default, the rate limiters, if let's say there are too many requests, if they are throttled, then they will be sending four two nines, like we just discussed in the um, video, right? I mean, obviously we will be sending HTTP 429 based on the rate limiting and uh, Spring Cloud Gateway already does that for us by default. So that's what happens. So after 40 consecutive sec uh, requests for two consecutive seconds, then we will be getting error messages, right? So that's what uh, this means. Again, within a second, we will be allowing only 20 uh, requests. Again, you will be sending like 429s. Now, let me restart the application and then see what happens. Also, I have um, red is running. Let me show. So I have like, if I do a ready start, it just says red is already started. So I do have red is running here. In addition to this, also we need to um, add our dependency. So let me go to the dependency. I need to add the Spring Cloud, um, uh, the Spring Spring Boot Starter. I think we didn't add the Spring Boot Starter, right? Spring Boot Starter. In addition to that, we also need to add the dependency for our Redis, which is spring boot starter data Redis reactive. So I'm going to add the Redis reactive one so that I'm just removing the versions because they by default come in. So let me re-import. So I'm adding two dependencies in addition to the existing uh, spring cloud starter gateway because I want to enable my rate limiters, right? So I'm going to add the spring cloud um, or the Spring Boot Starter and the Spring Boot Starter Data Redis Reactive, which will be helping in persisting my data. Let me restart the application. This should now connect to the Redis instance, which is just up and running here. Now, if I notice, I can see that uh, the application is up. Let me go and like connect from the browser here. I get a 403 error. This is because the application is not able to route uh, or resolve the um, traffic into the rate limiters because we have added a rate limiter, but then we have not added the key resolver. So there needs to be a key resolver which we need to add. So I'm just going to add that, uh, add bean. So key resolver is an interface which we need to add. So that every time when the uh, request comes in the redis or the rate limiter knows that okay this is the exact key or this is the exact same request coming from the same client or the user so the key resolver denotes um, whether we want to restrict it specifically based on a particular client or a particular user or maybe just we want to just apply it at the application or the gateway level right so in my case i mean uh, for example we we need to do a return and um, i'm just getting an exchange object so this is a server ex web exchange object um, what we generally do is we get the request. So from the exchange, we get the request and then we can get headers. We can get the path. Uh, we can get all those information. For example, if let's say we are doing a query parameter, you can uh, look at if people are passing any user information in the query parameter or maybe in the headers, etc. Right. I'm just going to get some remote address dot get address. 
dot host address right just to say that okay i want genuine keys right from individual host so i want to restrict my rate limiting logic specific to a host right so i'm just adding something called as host address we need to convert this into a mono jar just so that's it so key resolver is basically what is the key which will be used for the rate limiter every time a request comes in so it could be a user it could be a host name or it could be any logic which we want in my particular case here i'm just going to use because i'm using from the same host so i'm using the host if let's say it's a production application you can do go by client specific information which could be like user information coming from the header or in the query parameter you can use those as well so here i'm just using the host class so let me restart the application so the application is started let me go and try again you should be able to see the hello world yeah so my key resolver got resolved so i'm able to uh, query the application now how do i test the rate limiting uh, right now if you see the logic what i have put in the yaml configuration we are allowing 20 requests per second right now how do i do it i created a, a script so that we can uh, test this out i'll just show the script i created something called loop.sh so what this is doing is it's doing a curl and it's going to return only the http code right um that's it and it's just going to do it infinitely that's all so since it's a simple uh, endpoint it's just going to like skim through it within like uh, so many times within a second right now let's see what happens now, if you see here there were like multiple times where there were 200 so let me stop so if you see here there were multiple times which where we can see 200s right it's like two four six eight 10 12 14 16 18 and 20 so if you remember the limits what we had applied so the replenish rate is 20 right so obviously that's what happened so after the 20 requests within a second we started getting 429 response code right this is nothing but the bad uh, or the too many requests coming into the uh, api so this is how the rate limiter is applied on our cloud or uh, the spring cloud gateway right you can see that all the requests are now getting rejected uh, right so this is how you can enable rate limiters using spring cloud gateway with minimal code right i think i didn't even add anything i've seen a lot of videos where people post uh, using the um, resilience for j library where they add the um, rate limiters into the application itself now what happens if in that case is if i scale this particular application into multiple instances those rate limiting logic will get stuck within an instance right so in that case you cannot like apply the rate limiting for your application but if you add it to the gateway then obviously gateway also can scale but then your scaling at the gateway will be like something different from the way your application can be scaled right obviously the gateway can scale to uh, more number of instances than the application but still you will be able to apply all this logic at the gateway level rather than at the application level and all these should be based on configuration not just with code with uh, resilience 4j most of the time you add code within the application right so if you add it outside the application and with a configuration kind of uh, setting then that's better than adding a production code that's the reason why i chose spring cloud gateway and uh, showed the demo using spring cloud gateway i'll just summarize what we just discussed initially i created a spring boot application using the spring cloud gateway library as a dependency later we added some configurations for the rate limiting we added configurations for the routing so the spring cloud gateway routes the traffic to the uh, drop wizard application which is just a hello world application which just exposes slash hello um, and we added some filters later called the request rate limiters and also we added uh, the java palm dependency for adding the spring starter data redis reactive dependency so all these were added so that our rate limiting can be enabled out of the box and also the rate limiting can be stored within the redis um, cluster so i use the local redis instance so in case of production applications you can use a redis cluster and it automatically injects the data into the redis cluster and keeps them consistent i hope this was pretty much helpful in terms of understanding a real-time use case on how you can apply rate limiters of course, you can apply rate limiters at the application logic, like I said, using Resilience 4J or Bucket 4J. But I prefer doing it in the Spring Cloud Gateway because you can just add a configuration and then just out of the box, you can get Spring Cloud's um, features on 
enabling rate limiters. As always, this code is available in the GitHub repository. I have given the link in the description below. If you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.